You know, you've seen all kinds of YouTube videos using strange things as antennas. Well, today, I've got one for you. What about using good old regular found in everybody's garage extension cords as an antenna? Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Tracy, VE3TWM. Thank you for tuning in to Outdoors on the Air. I've got a little story to share. A number of years ago, I went to buy a used tuner off a of ham who lives in a nearby city. And we got to chatting, as often happens whenever I, I make uh, some kind of a, a sale or a purchase on the used market. I like to learn a little bit about the people I'm buying. He passed a story on to me about a field day his club did years ago where they used good old extension cords as a ground plane for their field day station, uh, running it all on 20 meters. And I was absolutely fascinated by this concept. And this is a project I've wanted to do ever since having that conversation. It took me a number of years, but I finally got everything together to try to make this a reality. You're going to see what happens first time because I haven't had the chance to get out with it yet. But what are we talking about? First things first, we got to have extension cords. So I waited until they went on sale at a local hardware store and what I've got are four 24 foot 11 inch extension cords. Notice the military green for all of you tactical types out there. All right, I understand that adds about 3 dB a signal to, a, to an antenna. Now, I've got that, but now I gotta actually get this connected up to a radio. How am I gonna do that? Let me show you. I reached out to a fellow by the name of Bob at Ballin Designs. Ballin Designs has a tremendous reputation for making very high quality ballons. I explained what I was trying to do and he suggested to me this model 41 32, which is a four to one ballon. Heavy duty, uh, it's high power, uh, able to withstand high mismatches, uh, and completely weatherproofed. So I like that one. It, I think it cost me, I don't know, something around 60 or 70 dollars US. Uh, had it shipped to me to Canada. It's got an SO239 connection on it and two screw lugs for attaching the wires from the antenna. So, okay, so now I got the ballon taken care of and I've got the wires coming from the extension cord. How am I gonna get these suckers to talk to one another? Here's what I've done. Okay, so let's take a look at this device that I've concocted for this experiment. I went and bought an external case for an outdoor outlet that would accommodate four outlets. I then bought the actual outlets themselves and I had to do something with this one over on the left here because this top left one is where the vertical radiator extension cord is going to plug in and then go straight up my mast. The other three extension cords are going to plug into the other three receptacles. I've got those marked with a G for ground plane. This one is marked with V for vertical. So what I've done and I had to do with this one is I literally had to go in. Oh and by the way let me show you this because this is important. These extension cords are two conductor. There is no ground on them. Uh, so I'm only dealing with the, uh, the hot and the, uh, the positive on these leads. What I've done with the one in the upper left here is, and I had to go in and physically break the connection between this outlet and that outlet because it wanted to pair the two together. And I need this one, the vertical element, to be separate so that when the extension cord gets plugged in down here, it doesn't also add to the vertical um, the, the vertical element, the vertical wire that I'm using for the for the antenna. Okay, so the others are all 
tied in together here. I could have used, if I had been using three conductor uh, uh, extension cords with a ground, I could have just used the ground uh, connection, which is already built into boxes like this. But I, in this case, because I'm using the two conductor, I couldn't do that. So there's my Frankenstein monster device to make this all work. I'm going to work with my pal Tom. There's a military mast set up behind me. I'm going to affix the vertical extension cord and uh, then we're going to lay out the radials. Okay, Tom and I got the vertical element set up. Here's the extension cord running down the pole. Uh, all I have to do now is take the remaining extension cords and set out the ground radials. Plug those in and then we're going to get a look at the analyzer and see what kind of results we get. Radials are laid. Vertical is up. Now to get these plugged in. Just out of curiosity, I want to do a wide band scan across the HF spectrum here and see what we get. And that's really interesting, isn't it? So I've got dips uh, all over the place. Uh, I see that the minimum SWR is actually at 34 megahertz. I want to zoom in. I want to do a couple of quick readings on the 20 meter band, the 15 meter band, and the 10 meter band. Okay, so we've got just below a 3 to 1 SWR on 20 meters. So we can use this antenna on 20 with a tuner. 15 meters, well under 2 to 1 across the entire band. Finally, a look at 10 meters. We've got a minimum of 1.98 at 28761. The band below, it's it's through across the band is below three to one. So that's that's pretty darn good. We can use this antenna with a tuner. Let's see if we can make some contacts. I have set up my SGC 2020. The bands appear to be open, uh, 20, 15, and 10. I'm gonna try my luck on uh, 20 meters here. And I've got connected up my Kenwood AT130 portable tuner because the SWR was Close to three to one, I've managed to bring it down to about one point, uh, I don't know, 1 1.6, 1 1.7 to one or something on that, which is more than good enough for the SGC. SGC is probably putting out somewhere around 30 watts on 20. Let's see if I can make a contact. Victor Echo 3, Tango, Whiskey, Mike. Okay, park to park, please stand by. Uh, Victor Echo 3, I uh, uh, believe it was Tango, Whiskey, Mike, QSL. QSL, Victor Echo 3, Tango, Whiskey, Mike. I've got you at a 5-9 into Ontario, sir. Hey, you must have a pipeline, and it might interest you to know I'm using an extension cord as an antenna today, but uh, I'll let you get back to it. Thanks again for the activation. Thank you so much for the call. I appreciate it. Uh, I'll break with you and go to the park to park. Thank you. Echo 7, run over. Victor Echo 3, Tango, Whiskey, Mike. Which Victor Echo? Victor Echo 3, Tango, Whiskey, Mike. Victor Echo 3, Tango, Whiskey, Mike. VG, Tango, Whiskey, Mike, 5 and 9. QSL, 5 and 9, thanks for the contact. Well, there you have it. The extension cord ground plane did manage to make a couple of DX contacts, one on 20 meters, the other one on 10 meters, with Tom's Anytone CB slash 10 meter radio. 
Uh, the reason we swapped it out is because the SGC 2020 only puts out about 12 watts on 10. Uh, Tom's Anytone uh, puts out something like 35. So I, just a couple of thoughts from my perspective on this antenna. It was a fun experiment, but if we took a look at the SWR charts, it would certainly appear as if the antenna wasn't really efficient anywhere. Uh, I think the Ballon helped a lot. Uh, Tom, who's having a bad hair day today so he can't come on the camera, mentioned he thought that this would be a good idea for the ground radials exclusively, that there might be some interaction amongst the cabling inside that outlet box that's causing the funky SWR curves and I think he could be on to something there if he just ran a straight radiator wire up the mast and attached it to the ballon directly you might get away from that but I I'm wondering what you're thinking about this exercise did you think this was fun did you think it was interesting do you have any tips for version 2 of such a device really I'm very interested in hearing anything you might have to say about it so Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps my channel. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. And uh, thanks for watching. Now it's your turn. Get out of the shack. Get outdoors and get on the air. 7-3 from Tracy, VE3, TWM.